Oh man, you shouldn't be out here. With Doc Ock on the loose, this could be the most dangerous night of my life. And yours. I'm David Gansel, and welcome to Armchair Imagineering. Right now, Disney is building its long-awaited and still currently unnamed Marvel Land at California Adventure. Update, since filming this video, the land has in fact been named. A land that everybody is going to compare to Marvel Superhero Island, despite zero creative overlap. But the theme park scene has changed a lot since 1999. And as much as we all still love that Spidey ride, we have different expectations for our theme park experiences now. The frankly long overdue hot trend in theme parks right now is interactivity. Not just interactive attractions, but interactivity woven throughout the land, immersing you in the experience by allowing you to participate in the narrative. You're no longer just visiting places that characters happen to live, now you're an active part of the character's story. And as you engage in that story, you get to form allegiances. During Ghost Town Alive at Knott's Berry Farm, kids can sign up to be a deputy, or they can join the bandits and help rob the bank. At Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you get to interact with spies and stormtroopers and even complete tasks in the app for the Resistance or the First Order. So as we await Disney's Marvel Forney Adventure Island, it's fair to ask, will this land have interactive elements? How will kids find themselves swept up in the Avengers adventures? During Summer of Heroes, there was a stage show called the Avengers Training Initiative, basically the DCA equivalent to Jedi Training Academy, but instead of lightsaber fighting Darth Vader, kids got to throw foam shields at... this guy. The height of adventure! But it raises an unavoidable issue about interactivity in a Marvel attraction. The adventures that Marvel characters go on are... dangerous. And as much as every kid might want it, Disney's probably not gonna let kids run along the rooftops and fly around with stark weaponry physically fighting aliens. I mean, sure, maybe kids could be honorary S.H.I.E.L.D. agents because nothing ever goes wrong for S.H.I.E.L.D., right? No, there's gotta be another way. So what other role could kids play in the Marvel Universe? Well, what's another role they can play in Ghost Town Alive? That's right, a reporter. I think you might know where I'm going with this. Come on in and sign up for the Daily Bugle Cub Reporter League. Go take pictures of Spider-Man and the other heroes, and then bring your pictures back to the office in exchange for prizes. But while you're out on assignment, you start to see some super villains too. And as the day goes on, you uncover more of the story, tracking the heroes and the villains, until your reporting helps the heroes figure out the villain's plot and save the day. At its lowest scale version, this would be a great way to plus up the character meet and greet experience. Sure, kids may not be as excited to take a picture with a college student dressed as Hawkeye as they are to take a picture with a college student dressed as T'Challa or Loki, but if you gamify the photo-taking experience, well now they're gonna want to meet them all. Alright kid, here's your new mission. Captain America has been sighted over by the Tabon Tower. Go get the scoop, tell us what he's up to, and get a picture. Ah, oh, welcome back, kid. What's that? Captain America says he and the Avengers are patrolling, keeping their eyes out for a Kree invasion? You better go find Captain Marvel and find out what she knows. But, much like Ghost Town Alive and Galaxy's Edge, it doesn't have to be limited to existing meet and greet experiences because at certain points in the day, story beats can take the form of action sequences. Then we'll watch the Avengers fight as we get the scoop for the bugle. This way they can keep the traditional meet and greet elements but still use it to lead into more exciting super heroics. Oh, what's that? Captain Marvel expects the Kree invasion at the restaurant at 3 o'clock and we'd better tell people to evacuate? Boy, that sounds dangerous. You better be there to get some pictures. Then you go to the designated spot at the designated time and the meet and greet Avengers you've been interacting with are all like, don't worry, we've got this. And they run inside and then stunt performers dressed exactly like them come out on the roof and they fight off the aliens. It's all very, very exciting. And you're right there taking pictures. There's stunts, there's probably pyrotechnics, there's cool music. It's all very exciting to witness. And then you take your pictures back to the bugle and they reward you with, I don't know, a certificate claiming to be whatever the MCU equivalent of a Pulitzer is? Now, I know what you're probably thinking. At least I know what you're thinking if you're all caught up on the MCU. Uh, if you're not, I'm about to get into some minor spoilers, so you might want to skip ahead to this time code in the video, or else just mute the video for this amount of time, and then just I'll let you know when to unmute it. 
visually, you know. So yeah, right now you're probably thinking, this idea does not even come close to fitting in with the new Alex Jonesy version of the Daily Bugle presented in Spider-Man Far From Home. And yeah, that is true. But the Marvel Disney Park universe is not the same as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of overlap, much like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Marvel Animated Television Universe have a lot of overlap, but they're not an identical continuity. I mean, Mission Breakout doesn't fit into the MCU canon at all. What, Peter still has a Walkman and Groot's still a baby even though Mantis is already part of the team? That doesn't track! No, it's a different timeline. A very, very similar timeline with as many of the same actors as they can afford, but not the exact same timeline. And California Adventure has already established the presence of a more traditional version of the Daily Bugle. I mean, sure, they put that stuff there before they knew what the movies would do with the Daily Bugle, but the fact that they acknowledged the Daily Bugle at all meant that they were okay veering off from the direction the movies were going in. So yeah, maybe they'd want to steer the land into a more specifically MCU-style direction, but I feel like the traditional Daily Bugle is such an iconic part of Spider-Man's lore that they would trust theme park guests to understand what was going on. Also, since filming this video, the future of Spider-Man in the MCU has become far less certain, so it's possible Disney's gonna want to steer away from MCU portrayals anyway and focus on, you know, the millions of other forms of media where they exclusively own Spider-Man, where they don't have to honor contracts that were signed before they swooped in and bought everything. Besides, I fully expect this land to have several of the characters that we saw die in Infinity War and Endgame, so continuity is just you know, not really a concern here. Okay, that was really the only spoilery thing I wanted to address. Told you it was minor. Uh, let's let the spoiler avoiders catch up now. Hey, welcome back, spoiler avoiders. You're just in time for the wrap-up. As always, Disney, I hereby give up all rights to this idea. It's all yours. You can have it. I won't make a fuss. You won't get any trouble from me. I won't even brag about it because for all I know, you are already going to do this or something very similar to it, and I'm just a really good guesser. So go ahead. All I want to do is enjoy this. But in the meantime, what would you like to see in Marvel Land? And how would you plus up Marvel Superhero Island with interactive elements? Let's discuss this in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.